The following program contains scenes and language of a frank and explicit nature. Discretion is advised. All right. <clears throat> Welcome to Reform Radio. I think I'm still Todd Newman. I'm a different version than what was a bunch of months back, but I'm definitely Todd Newman. And joining me tonight, Dan, the Manuel Cleary. Hey, Dan. That, that is literally like weirdly the most relatable thing you've ever said. Like we're all changing a lot. <laughs> it's not for I the know. better. <laughs> Especially you, because I'm noticing you have a little bit of like a village people vibe going right now because I'm mustache <laughs> well that too but the mustache and the beard and the way the hair is you could be like a badass biker dude or a highly effeminate gay Indian like <laughs> Indian yeah <laughs> like okay gay, okay I wouldn't put you as the gay Indian I'd put you more as the gay cop well, I thought the mohawk, because it's kind of like a Indianish mohawk. That would be going with like, that would be too easy. I'm trying to like pick the cool the one. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to pick the cool one. I get it. You know, yeah. I think the construction worker guy is out though. How come? Why that one? Why is that one out? Because of the bandana you got on. Oh, okay, okay, that's fair. It's it's a splash of something else that's very doesn't say gay construction worker. It says all right. It says gay everything else. Okay, the truth is, like, you know my love of the village people, so I'm kind of trying to, like, pull together all the aspects because it's hard to pick your favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's maybe like, if, you, if you put, like, a leather vest, like one of the Indian American, Native American Indian patterns, you know, like a brown leather vest with beads on it mm -hmm. and a badge. That's pretty good. And, and carry a sledgehammer. Yeah, exactly. Who, what, else, what other village people are there? There's like five, so... Is there a priest? Probably not. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Too easy. <laughs> Although, the 2020 version of the village people should have a priest. It should be just five priests. Or four yeah, priests and like a senator or something. Four priests and a kid singing <laughs> up front. <laughs> that's great. That's great. What are the but, five village people? That's a good question. So a, look it up. Look it a, up. There's a cop. I know there's an Indian and I know there's a cop. Is there a... Uh, and I think Ooh. there's a construction worker. And there's two others? Yeah. Okay, I let's check this I out. I think there's five people. All right. No, there's four people because it's why they used to spell out the YMCA, right? Oh, true. And then oh, there's no... Or and was that so just... <laughs> was that them doing it or was that all the idiots who love the song doing it? No, they're doing it. And I wonder if like, if there's a fifth guy, if he just like stands on the end, just like reads a book or something. Uh, he stands as, in the end as the exclamation point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's, there's, dude, there's six of them. Okay. So maybe two guys are parentheses. Okay. I don't even know what some of these are. Okay. So there's an Indian. There is yeah, a, a straight up cowboy. I'm the cowboy. There's uh like a, is he a fucking postal worker? I don't know what these guys are. There's an army dude. There's a, a leather clad gay biker. All right. Yeah. I got it right here. All right. So the. There's like a motorcycle cop because he's got like the motorcycle helmet on. And There's he's black. The, yeah. You're this guy. Here, I'm going to show you. <laughs> right now, you're this guy. Can we see this? Dude, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Frank will put these you're, up on the screen. Yeah. You're this guy right now. I mean, but you also. If I were to choose one, I'd want to be that guy or the leather clad biker. The leather daddy. Yeah, wait. <laughs> you mean this guy? That's the one. Yeah, those are my two choices. You got to grow the mustache out a little more and dye it black. So yeah, okay. there's a there's there's a cowboy. Mm -hmm. There's a construction worker. There's an Indian. There's a cop. There's a leather. All right. So <laughs> here it is. Here, let me let me give you the rundown. Cowboy, construction worker, Indian motorcycle cop army guy military soldier we'll call him a soldier and then just a extremely gay guy <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> those are, those are the guys 
Yeah, he's. It's, it sucks when you're in the village, people, and you're the gay one. Yeah, but like, <laughs> I, to me, see, I give him the credit because he's the honest one. True. The others are all like, you know, trying to hide it under some costume, some caricature. The rest of them are all culturally Lying. appropriate. They're appropriating people's culture. Yeah, yeah. And I bet you this guy is not an Indian. Dude, how great would it be if none of them are gay and how quickly they'd be canceled nowadays? We should start. <laughs> this guy with the oh yeah, the lightning, the lightning bolt on his construction hat. Yeah, you see that guy? It just screams construction work. <laughs> they really should. Like some music producer should do a reboot of the village people. And like, what would they be now? Like if you had to change it up now? I don't know. I mean, if you, uh, they'd have to, a good question. They have to be all like half trans. You'd have to yeah. have Asians. You'd have to have blacks, probably someone in a wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You know, probably the, the leather daddy from taking it, you know, up the old, yeah. up the old shoot. The leather, the leather guy still stays. Absolutely. Yeah, probably. Yeah, he, he's a he's a staple. Yeah. But I feel like all the other jobs, all the other all the other job descriptions can be replaced with something new and inventive. They'd probably have to be teachers because we want to get some eyes on teachers because they're right, respected. Right. Um, um like the social justice warrior would have to be one of them. And uh well, what else could we have? A climate change person. <laughs> And where would they stay? Because I don't think that the YMCA is the place to stay anymore. They'd stay in whatever bathroom they want to be in. <laughs> they'd, st <laughs> they'd stay in the uh, what? What do what do you call those? A multi gender, the the yeah, all gender the, bathroom. Yep. Yeah, yep. It's fun to stay in the all gender bathroom <laughs> because wasn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't it true that it's fun to stay at the YMCA was like a thing like for gay sex? Was, yeah. it, was it not? Right. So where are they having that sex now in 2020? Well, if you ask my dad, it's the all gender bathroom. <laughs> right, right. Or, <laughs> or in times of COVID, it's fun to stay inside. Yeah. That's, and that's think the song. it's fun to stay and inside think, and, think and think about think, the YMCA. <laughs> think, think about how awesome it was in the free YMCA before <laughs> AIDS and COVID. <laughs> Dude, I'm so over this stuff. Yeah, I can't take it. I'm, I I usually hate talking about it, but I'm like, I'm I'm feeling really boxed in and really cooped up. And everything yeah. is really overwhelming. Yeah. It's definitely rat in cage mm -hmm. time here. Mm -hmm. And it's been like hot and smoky in LA. So like you can't really even enjoy the outdoors. No, nah, outdoors is ruined. Indoors is ruined. Yep. It's just over. Earthquake. We just had a fucking earthquake the other night. Were you awake? Did it wake you up? I was already, I was awake. Yeah, me too. Which is weird because <clears throat> I always talk about with my, my friends and stuff. I'm one of those guys that can feel things before they happen. And for the past, the two nights before the earthquake, I woke up in the middle of the night and went like this, thinking that there was about to be an earthquake. Interesting. And there wasn't. So I went back to sleep. And then the second night it happened and there wasn't. I went to sleep. And then I was awake and it just started doing it. I was like, oh shit, I knew it. I fucking knew there was going to be an earthquake. I don't have know you, why I get that sense, but. Have you done that with earthquakes before? Uh huh. I, I'm the guy who, and it's not, it's not hokey. I don't think I'm the guy who wakes up five minutes before it happens mm -hmm. and just sitting there and then it happens. Like something wakes me. I, even if it's maybe something going that I'm not sure about yet, but mm -hmm. yeah, I've, I've, I pretty much have been that person. I don't doubt it. I mean, people say that dogs can tell like quite a yeah. ways before an earthquake and birds the know and, my dog, it's funny because I made that joke because the dog was on the bed with me. And I was like, I looked at him after like, where was the warning, dude? <laughs> like you were running around in circles or barking like at things that weren't there. You had one job, Jake. One yeah. job. I could have been killed. Yeah. Yeah, that was a weird one the other night. That was like a, um, it was a smaller Richter scale than the last one that we had, but it felt it was more violent to me yeah, this last it was, one it went a little longer too that's why like it went like for 
it was a good like 10 shakes where the last were just like three or four you know it, it was one of the ones where like as it's going you're like i feel is like this, this gonna, should be over soon <laughs> is this gonna turn into full-blown <laughs> Cause it goes, it's gonna go. I don't ever, I don't ever want that one. I really don't want that one. I lived here, and what was that, ninety four or something? You were here for Northridge. Yeah, I was here for the Northridge earthquake, and it was fucking insane. Wait, did you you ran outside naked? Is that true? Is that right? Is that you? That wasn't me. Well, I mean, I I have run outside naked, but not on that particular night. Right. And much, much more recently than 94. Yeah. Yeah. Um, No, I remember I woke up right before it. The craziest thing is I had two people, one guy who I didn't know at all and a girl I've known since I was a little kid who had just flown out that morning. I picked them up at the airport. They were going to stay because I was living in a two bedroom. I had an old roommate. He moved out. So there was an empty room. So I was like, you guys can stay here until you find a spot. They were just moving to Los Angeles. Never met this guy before. And, uh, and it, we hung out, we had dinner, talked a little bit, went to sleep, woke up. And like, right when I woke up, it was just about to happen. And it was like that, like it just started shaking and then it was, and I tried to get up, I remember, off my bed and I just kept getting, like I couldn't take three steps to get to the doorway. It was literally like getting, that. Yeah, I just kept getting tossed back onto the bed and then it stopped. There's tons of aftershocks and I'm like, I'm in my room and the, their room is like a living room and then around the corner is their room and I'm like, are you guys okay? And they're like, what was that? I was like, it was an earthquake. Just relax. Just stay right there. And I finally get over to their room. And they're both sitting. There's no furniture in that room because the guy had moved out. Sure. They're sitting in the middle of the room, like on this cheap carpeted room, holding each other like this. And then like a week later, the guy flew back. I never heard from him again. Neither did she. And then she, whatever. But uh yeah, it Man. was fucking crazy. And the one thing I remember most was the sound of the car alarms. Because every car in Los Angeles' alarm went off from the shake. So it's just... Like, for a fucking hour. Where were you living then? In Hollywood. Okay. Okay, so you weren't too far from it then? No, I Ish. mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> But God. bless you. But Thanks. my my buddy's mother lived in Northridge, like right where the quake was. So we went out there the next day to help her like clean up. Everything was fucking trashed. And uh, I remember there being aftershocks there that felt as strong as the earthquake did. And it was fucking, she, she was like shell shocked from it. Like all her shit was broken. Yeah, it was fucking crazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't ever want to have one of those ones. Yeah, it was not. Like, the way you're describing it, you know that, like, when you're in a fun house and you have that tunnel that you, that spins the mm-hmm, spinning mm-hmm. room? I feel like it's yeah. trying to walk, like, trying to walk through that. Yeah, it's worse than that because it's like, you're, it's like that tunnel is spinning like that and you're trying to walk through it. Except and then the reversing. Tunnel, <laughs> no, except the tunnel's going like this. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got it. <laughs> so, yeah, fuck that, that stuff. At that point, it doesn't even need to be a spinning tunnel. Okay. Okay. (laughs) But yeah, it was fucked up. Anyway. Okay. So yeah, Um, that one, this one obviously wasn't as, uh, but the cool thing is, not cool. So immediately when it starts shaking, I just, I wait to see if it's going to pick up and it starts to die down and I jump out and I, I go to my son's, I open the door, my son opens his door and he's like, smile on his face. He's like, is that an earthquake? And he's like, I'm like, yeah, you all right? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. He's, I'm like, did anything fall over? He's like, just my bottle of water that I was drinking. And I'm like, yeah, it's nothing. And then I open my daughter's bedroom door and she opens, I open the door and she's just lit. It's like kneeling next to her bed like this. And I'm like, honey, it'll be fine. Just come here. So then she's sitting with me and she's scrolling through her phone and she realizes she was making a TikTok when the earthquake happened. So she's talking into the phone. We're watching it. She's saying, and then all of a sudden the phone starts going like this, the screen. And then she goes, 
mommy <laughs> and then it cuts off I'm does like, she save it does, does yeah, she have like, the video keep that yeah i'm like keep that video yeah if she allows it we should put it we should put it in this uh slot right here <laughs> yeah 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 we can for sure that's, that's a that's cool um so yeah yeah but fucking it's fucking way, fine. That, that perfectly nails your kids personalities by the way yeah it's exactly them too you know but they're uh they um no, what I was going to say was it's it's literally end of times, like fire and brimstone, like earthquakes and fires and like there's going to be floods when it starts raining and because all the fires, there will be mudslides, mudslides and floods. Like, of it's course. fucking insane. Like yep. I don't know how much more shit you can put on top of this. Yeah, that, that Friday night, there was Friday night, right? The earthquake? I don't remember. I've had like the last two days today's been good the last two days were just like really horrible days and uh i remember like i was sitting stewing just angry trying to watch tv nothing looked good i didn't want to look at anything online just anger i've had like murderous rage lately and then the earthquake i'm like of course i just take it just fucking kill me i don't want any of this (laughs) um i've been on these walks and like do you go for walks at all Around your- I did a, I did in the beginning, you know, okay. more than I have been lately. But yeah, sure. I since the fires, I walk, uh, I walk the dog. You know what I mean. Have you happened to seen any like extra dead animals more than usual, birds or rats or squirrels? Because I've been seeing more of those, which is weird. I haven't seen more dead ones, but I've definitely been seeing more animals because they're all getting fucking displaced from fires and from just the air quality and all that. But I've been also seeing way more bugs. Oh, yeah. Or not. Yeah. Mosquitoes are now a thing in Los Angeles, which was always one of the best parts of living here was no mosquitoes. But now they're just here. Here. Yeah. 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 But I've been walking and seeing like dead rats and birds that are just like laying on the sidewalk and. I, I don't know if it's smoke inhalation or if there's just some kind of weird plague happening or if they're well, just like killing themselves. Didn't you have that animal serial killer in your neighborhood not yes. too long ago? Yes, yes, we did. Maybe it's that guy. Man, if, you, in on... if this guy can serial kill pigeons, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> that's pretty impressive. So what else is going on? Do other you ever than murderous rage? Do you ever get um like a scab inside your nose from yes. either like a, okay. So last week I had one of those inside my nose and I usually try to just like scrape it off. And for whatever reason, I couldn't get this scab off my cartilage last week. I'm trying to scrape it, trying to grab it. Nothing happens. So I grab a pair of tweezers and I pinch onto it and I give it a yank. And I was like, Oh shit. Blood oh, just shit. everywhere. It wasn't blood and it wasn't a scab. It was just a piece of my nose cartilage that was sticking out. So I ripped, I tore this nose cartilage and it like, obviously like the water starts coming down my eyes, but I can't leave it there. I can't just like have a, now a dangling piece of cartilage. (laughs) So I had to like bear down and rip it and rip it. And it was like, that's the most pain I felt in in a little while. And it still burns. Yeah, you got to put stuff in there because if that gets infected, that could fucking go up into your brain and kill you. Let's hope, dude. Let's hope. <laughs> I might do the other side tonight just to give myself a better odds. No, I put some Aquaphor in there just to kind of fill it up, but that was a real shocking moment. Yeah. It's amazing the things that happen to you when you're stuck at home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got to get out of here, dude. This is. Uh... But I've, I know, I think I know what you're talking about because like I've sometimes gone in there and pulled down and you could like. Yeah, it's like you could feel it feels it's almost like a bone, but it's not. It's cartilage. Yeah. Yeah, I tore one of those off the other week. <laughs> <laughs> so shitty. Oh, and that's uh, and that's my update for the last two weeks. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, we will see you next week. We tried to get Frank on the show again. Everyone keeps asking where yeah, Frank is. Well, here's been. the thing. Look, I know he's going to edit the show, so we might as well get it out in the open now. Uh huh. Like, I don't know what the fuck to say about this guy anymore. Like, we've tried this in the past, and it was like decline, decline, decline for every fucking other reason. And now the one time, I'm like, I even said to you, like, let's just stop asking because it's, it's it's too painful <laughs> to keep getting rejected by Frank. Yeah. And then you're like, well, 
how about having Frank on? He's mix it up a little bit. I'm like, sure. Why not? Knowing, knowing already that he was not going to do it. Yeah. So like, I don't, I just, I'm at a loss. Like, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Like this, this I don't fucking know. guy does not want to be <laughs> any part of me and you. So is that just it? Is it one of those things of like, uh, he just, he's just not that into you. Is that us? Yeah. And I'm fine with that, but let's just accept it and move on. <laughs> I'm, it's not, you know, I'm not like love lost or anything. He's saying he's in next week. Let's see what happens. Yeah. We'll see. I doubt no. it. That's funny we'll shit. See. I think we should give him a link and just have him sit there and wait and not click on the link ourselves. Just to fucking little payback. Oh, that's pretty funny. Just send him an empty zoom link. And it'll really redirect, just, redirect to INS and get them deported out of here. <laughs> You've now joined the, the the ICE Zoom meeting. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Fuck him. Yep. Yeah. Can you believe? Uh, it was it. Uh, Goodfellas is thirty years old right now. I just saw someone post about that. That's crazy because when I was younger, when it came out. 30 years younger uh I, I forget who it was somebody i knew somehow got a bootleg of it like before it came out in theaters that had no titles on it it just went straight into the film it was that's, like you know that's hard to a, do back in the day that's crazy yeah yeah and he, it was a vhs tape i still have it actually hey it fell off a truck <laughs> and there were like there were like three, four, maybe five lines that were different in this version that they obviously used another take or I don't, I don't imagine they reshot it, but they used a different take and uh, these were in this version. So I had seen that movie like 15 fucking times before it came into the theaters and I was hooked right away. And I remember telling my brother, because my brother and I both love movies of that ilk, and uh, um, we grew up around a lot of people in the seventies of that nature. I mean, that were, yeah, yeah, of course, that was just like that. So it was very relatable in that sense. And uh, I was trying to fucking get him to watch it, and he was like, you know, nah, like maybe another time. Like, he didn't know what it was yet. You know, this is also. Raging Bull and Taxi J. These are my favorite movies at the time, so it wasn't it wasn't a surprise that it was awesome. You know? Okay, and so there is too. Like, so I'm like, you're, I'm telling you, this movie's gonna fucking change your life. You, he's like, I you know, fucking, I got dicks to suck or whatever, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> relatable, relatable. Yeah. And uh, one night he was getting ready to go somewhere, like in Manhattan, and he's getting ready, and I just put it in. Wait, 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 what? I just put it in. <laughs> Stuck Not, it right in? <laughs> the VHS. I just oh. lubed up the VHS and <laughs> right stuck it ass. right in. <laughs> stuck it in his ass. And it started playing out of his mouth. Amazing. He's like, I love this movie. <laughs> no, so I just put it in and started watching it in my room while he's fucking milling about. And I see him like glance once, twice. And he just fucking sat down and watched the entire, like, blew off all his plans. And he's like, how could you not have made me watch this, like, right when you got it? I'm like, I fucking told you. Anyway, congratulations on the uh, 30-year anniversary because it's one of the fucking most amazing films. I mean, you kind of answered my question, but I, I was going to ask you, like, did you realize when you first saw it that, like, this is a special movie? Yeah. I was yeah. like, this is this is up there with Godfather. This is... This is going to be mafia classic. I like it more than Godfather. Well, Godfather is a completely different type of movie. It, True. Godfather is Shakespearean almost. It's it's so cinematic that it's you know what I mean. It's almost like a it's almost like a fairy tale in a weird way. Interesting. You know what I mean, but Goodfellas is street level mob. You know, this isn't you know. The Godfather you're talking about, different countries involved, tier. right? And how the how the guy who runs the whole thing became the guy, the top guy, and it, and it's like I said, it's very Shakespearean almost in a way. It's like mafia government. Is, 
this is like a documentary of what it was like in the streets in the 70s and 80s in New York in that lifestyle, mm-hmm. you know? But, uh, yeah, I, I, I knew the second I saw it, like 10 minutes in, I was like, this is the best movie ever made. <laughs> like, like, I knew it. And Casino's 25 years old. Yeah. We're old Casino, dudes. Casino I love too, but it's not, it's certainly not up there even in my top 10. But really, I, I love it, and I'll I'll watch it all the time when it's on. But it didn't have that same impact that mm. Goodfellas had on me. Yeah, I, I don't put it too low below Goodfellas as far as enjoyable movies. Yeah, I mean it's great and enjoyable, but it, to me it's not like the end all be all like Goodfellas was. Mm-hmm. Have you watched yeah. The Irishman again since it came out? Yes, I have. Okay. You, I you think like- the Irishman is a great movie. It's just you know, it's it's not it's not your typical run and gun action type of movie. It's a it's a matured taste. Like you got to sit there and put the time into it, and it's well done and it's well acted and all that stuff. And the story is. A lot of people complain about that. Well, you know, that's not really the guy who did all that. Like, and you know, the point of the thing is, is that. Even Scorsese himself has said, I made a movie based on what the guy wrote in the book. Like, I'm not saying whether it's true or not. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta, this is what he said happened. I made a movie about it. I gotta watch it again. But uh, I thought it was really good. And I thought there was some really uh, valuable cinematic shots and all that in it. And there was some great performances. It's just, it's not like Goodfellas in that sense. And it is long. Like you got to put the time in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that though. But I think you and I are the same where if something's good, make it 10 hours. I don't care. Yeah. 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 I could sit there all night. Like that's why. Cause I went to the premiere. mm -hmm. I went to the LA premiere and the new, the New York premiere first and then the LA premiere. And uh, both times I saw it, I wasn't like, fuck man when's it gonna end i was i was riveted the whole time both showings so mm-hmm. i was like okay but <clears throat> what else did i just see that i really liked i just started the crown that's the you don't like oh, that shit, right I, I can't i like no. it. i like it because it's just the historical side of it to me it's like watching a, his, a high school history book <laughs> do you know what i mean and I oh, like what, that kind of shit. What a great pitch. Hey, yeah, kids, but, kids, if you're listening, it's like watching a high school history book. Yeah, Ugh. that's, yeah. Would you rather read it or watch it be fucking awesomely active with these great sets? That's my point. I think I'd rather live in 2020 for the rest of my life. <laughs> you're such an asshole. <laughs> I'm saying. Uh, I liked it. I like it so far. Okay. Um, that's the, that's the period. It's like a period that, piece, right? Yeah, it's the, it's all queen elizabeth and how she becomes queen and yeah it's uh it's good okay you're fucking missing out whatever you're I don't a think... little bitch that can't be open-minded and like learn about anything that's not boston related you could stick to your fucking ben affleck vehicles and i'll watch actual shit about actual american and english and world history i think i would bring more people with me to watch ben affleck vehicles than you would bring watching the crown that's fine. More fucking screen viewing for me. Like, keep all the fucking people who are uneducated out. Keep your bandwidth high. Keep mine down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can bog down me watching the town over and over again. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, Todd's crown will be in hyper HD. But there was something else that I just watched that was really fucking good, and now I can't remember what it was. Any chance you're watching Away on Netflix? No, I've heard... I've, people have told me about it, but I don't. I haven't seen it. I finished it, and it's like... I feel like it's like the Gilmore Girls, but in space. I never saw the Gilmore Girls. Me either. I heard about it. I just imagine like super. It's like a like an after school <laughs> special. It's so cheesy, and so like it's a family, and there's dysfunction, and mom goes to space, and how the family deals with it, and she has a boyfriend who's religious, and she. It's just like it's a little too much cheese for me, but it was enjoyable because space oh. shit was pretty cool. This is what I've been watching. The Vow. Have you watched that? No, I heard it was the good. First HBO four episode. 
Yeah, it's like a Scientology ish type of thing where people are in it and they think it's awesome and changing their lives, and then they realize that it's like a fucking sex cult and they get out. Documentary or a show? It's documentary, but it's like a nine part series. But only the first four, I think five, is on tonight. But uh, oh, I'm in. The first episode is like, do you remember? There's a, it was a film, a documentary of way back in the 90s or something called what the bleep are we doing or what the bleep have we done or some shit like that what the bleep marley, do we know or something like what that what the bleep do we know yeah and it's yeah. marley matlin is in it the, the actress, i never saw marley. it but it was a big documentary it was like when documentaries were just starting to become the new thing that everybody was craving was documentaries and it did really well it made like a ton of money which is which is uh, rare. For yeah. a doc- it did because it did well. Anyway, the guy who directed that documentary is one of the main characters in this because he was he bought into this whole thing and became like a high level guy in this uh, in this organization and recruited and all that kind of stuff. And then the lid gets blown off on it. And the first episode, if you, if you haven't watched it and you're going to watch it, the first episode is like explains what it is and who the guy who's like the guru who made up all this shit, you know, the, their L Ron Hubbard type of guy. And, uh, you're thinking this better get fucking juicy soon (laughs) because, and then like in the last five minutes it does, but for the first episode, you got to bear through that. And then it gets really fucking good. Kind of like the first uh, episode of that OJ documentary series. Yes, Do remember that? exactly. It's yes. just like, dude, we know who the fucking guy is. Come on. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of like that. Okay. Yeah. But once it gets cooking, it's good. I'll definitely watch that. I also heard that Lovecraft Country is really good. Yeah, I actually heard mixed things about that. Really? Yeah, like I heard some people say that they didn't like it. I heard it's very Jordan Peele-ish, which I like everything Jordan Peele does, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, That's other really- than that. I haven't been watching too much. Okay. I haven't watched news in God knows how long. I'll watch like Bill Maher and John Oliver and I'll get some news from that or listening to people. I'm not on Facebook anymore. Like, so I don't really know what's going on in the world. I mean, I hear the rumblings of politics and shit like that, but I just, I can't, I can't fucking do it anymore. There's not a lot of good stuff happening in that world. No. Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. That's really sad. Just yeah. like the timing of it, without getting political, the timing of it is so terrible. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, if you don't know, if you're listening abroad, we have a Supreme Court in the U.S., and they are lifetime appointments, which is also weird. Like, once you're yeah. in, you're in until you die or until you retire. And, uh, what, there's nine of them, right? Yes. Yeah, so... Usually it's pretty balanced, and and she was a very, uh, she did more for women's rights than probably anyone in U.S. history. Well, I, just women's and civil rights, and yeah, gay rights, and all that. Like she was the one, you know. And like, I think yeah. she was one of the first women to grow, Harvard Law School. Like there, there was a lot of firsts that she did. I I don't want to speak out of turn and say something that isn't true, but but uh, like if you're a woman who's ever had a house under your own name or bought a car without a man co-signing, or if you have your own bank account without a man co-signing, that is all because of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Right, right, right. Like, she was there that's, a, that's unbelievable yeah. that yeah. a woman couldn't have a bank account unless a guy was like, you know, she's good for it. Right. So she's dead, and now there's, the, there's a chance that they could put in someone that might, you know, uh, make abortion illegal in the next year or so in the yeah, U.S. but I don't know. I mean... I know that everybody's freaking out about it, but they're going to try everything to block and block and block until after November. Yep. And there's a move. Well, I mean, they're, they're the Speaker of their House, which is Democratic. She can uh, she can launch another impeachment towards the president or And they have Bill to Barr. vet whoever they put up for it, and that takes a long time, like, to vet out somebody. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, if Trump wins, okay, put – Put whoever in. The that's world that's a lot. Ending anyway, so I really don't care. <laughs> it does feel like it, though, doesn't it? <laughs> like it actually does. Yeah, it does I've, feel like that more than I've ever felt it like that before. 
It like, feels like we're winding down, man. <laughs> comedy and uh, and 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 uh, personal poisonous venom spitting aside, you know, and 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 glasses half empty cynicism aside, it does feel like that. Like, hmm, all those fucking nut jobs in the fucking seventies and the eighties in Times Square with the world is coming to an end signs and they're like. Hmm, maybe they were just a few years off. But they were right. early, but they're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I, I wasn't going to say anything, but like, I got an email uh, from my dad uh, yesterday, and he forwarded me an email that was like this anti liberal, liberals are stupid. They're destroying the country. They do nothing for society, unpatriotic. Like, he's basically saying, this is how I feel about you. Like right. he he's he's like I'm so disappointed in who you are to your core, and like at this moment I don't know if I'm gonna talk to my dad again. And I've never it's weird like I've I've never criticized my dad for his thoughts or for the way he lives his life. Like he's a good dude, he's a funny man, but he's like you know he's a conservative guy, right. and uh, that's happening all over the place. So I urge you yeah. if you're listening. Try not to bring this stuff into friendships or families. Uh, uh, dude, I had... Uh, go ahead. No, I was just saying, like, w- I've always been someone who... Y- you find common interests and find things you have in common. Don't let things that you disagree on, you know, pull you apart from everybody. Because that's yeah, what's happening everywhere. The, look for the similarities, not the differences. Yep. Um, here's the... Th- I just had a conversation today. I get this text from a friend of mine, a close friend of mine who has moved away in the last, like right before the pandemic hit, life change, moved up north, completely different life, kind of in the woods type of thing. And I talked to him, you know, once a week or whatever, at least texting or whatever. And it's been a rough couple of weeks. Like the kids are back at online school. We're making that adjustment, getting up early. I'm working on a few different things. It's been crazy in the house, you know, blah, 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 blah. Same shit as everybody. Yep. And <clears throat> he texted a few times and I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Cool. I'll talk to you soon. You know, like just being short, like I've been with everybody lately just cause you know, things, life, life is moving. Yeah. Life is moving. And so I get this, uh, this text from him <clears throat> And, uh, he says, Hey man, uh, like something to the effect of, are we, is there a problem between, uh, uh, are we on the outs or something like that? And I'm, I'm on the other, first he calls and I'm on the other phone on the other line. So I hit the, on the other line, call you back. And he calls again, like 20 seconds later on the other line, call you back. I think maybe it's a misdial. <clears throat> then he sends that text I'm like dude i'm on the other line i will call you back i write it out <laughs> you know like what the fuck you know and i call him we start talking well we both have this common friend and this common friend and him have been arguing politically a lot lately one's on one side one's on the other side this is exactly why I don't talk politics with either of them, really. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> but because this other friend and I are working on some work thing, has nothing to do with personalities, just a work thing, he got it in his mind like he's poisoning me against him, you know, like that one of those kind of things. So I finally call him and I'm like, dude. I've known you for almost 30 fucking years. Like if we were to have a, if I was having a problem with you, I would call you and I would say, Hey, I have a problem with you. Let's talk about it. He's like, well, that's what I thought. But then I started thinking, and if what's his name was getting in your ear and politics and fucking Biden, this and Trump that and Trump this and Biden that. And and I'm like, dude, you see what what's happening here. I'm like, you are fucking reassessing your entire relationship with me and you haven't even talked to me about it over politics you're talking to with someone else. 
Like, that's how crazy this shit is making people. Whether you're on this side or that side, it no, doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. It, it's, it does it's, not it's matter. Ferocious, no matter what way you're thinking. And it's, you know, they have, oh, this is something that I think everyone should see. Have you seen the yes. social dilemma? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Even the guys who created that thing at the end, they're like, what are you most fearful that's going to happen? He's like, uh, I don't know, a uh, civil war. Like, and these are some of the best minds around as far as like intellect. Yep. And I'm like, look, dude, look what, look what's going on. You and I have known each other for 30 years. We're fucking, I consider him a brother, best yeah. friend type of material. And I'm like, just off some political shit, you're talking with someone else. You think we're at, there's a rift between us. Now we laughed about it and okay, cool. No, I just wanted to make sure. And I'm like, but even the fact that he thought it, yeah, I'm like that's how bad this is. I don't want to make how it how fucked up this is. I don't want to make it worse for you, but also he thought that you were weak enough to be swayed by somebody. And I know you no, all have we, to know. Oh, you did. You went there. We we talked about that. Okay. And I'm like, dude, are you fucking like I got mad for a minute. Like, are you fucking kidding me? No one's talking like, you into thinking anything, <laughs> anything, anything at yeah. all. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you got you're fucking barking up the wrong tree. I was insulted a little bit. Like, yeah, I would to be. think that that would be the case, you know, and we laughed about me feeling insulted by it, too, because he knows me that well. But he's like, yeah, I didn't think so. He's like, I even talked about it with my girlfriend. I'm like, because I know his girlfriend very well. And I'm like, you talked about it with her. Like, why did you just fucking pick up the phone and say, Hey man, so and so is saying this. Like, is he getting in your ear? Like, no. What are you talking about? And this other guy tries, right? And I, I don't respond to any video, any meme I'm sent, nothing. Like, I just don't even respond unless it's something pertinent to like work or something like that. Then I'm like, yeah, cool. All right, nine thirty, we'll meet then. You know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's weird. Uh, it's just it is so hard to maintain friendships right now for for a lot of people. You know, I'm telling you, man, that's one of the reasons why, like, you know, I like posting my little pictures on Instagram, or whatever, whatever. But like, I can't take it. That's why I got off Facebook and Twitter. I can't take it anymore. Even just seeing it in my like, you can't help but see it if you're on there, you know. So I'm like, I just don't even want the temptation to see it. Yep. And I think one of the huge problems with it is and that's kind of. I mean, there's a lot more to it in this Netflix uh, doc, The Social Dilemma, but I made the kids watch it. I was like, you, you guys. Thank you. That's, I, that's every I kid I sat should. down. I was like, no phones. Give me your phones. We're watching this. Well, we don't want to watch. I'm like, it's like school. I'm like, this is exactly school. You're getting homeschooled right now, and you're going to sit here. You're going to fucking watch this from beginning to end. You're going to keep your fucking mouth shut. And they did. And... um. You know, one of the things that I, I got into this conversation with this guy today, even, and I'm like, you know, it used to be back in the day, and I know I've even said this on something to this effect on this show before. It used to be that back in the day, if you were of the intellectual cloth or if you had, if you were cut from that fucking cloth, you sought out information. That was the whole saying back in the day was information is power information is power that social media and 24 hour news cycles and independently owned privately owned news companies have changed that because information is not power anymore everybody has the information and all kinds some have the truth some have disinformation some have false information but it took a certain person to seek the information and now everybody just has it. And it, like I've said a million times, most of the people that have it are fucking stupid or fucking insane. And that's why you have friends for life doubting each other and relationships breaking up over this kind of shit and why we're on the brink of civil war. Yeah. There, was a tr there was a Trump rally in beverly hills this weekend it's like every weekend it's not a huge thing it's like a bunch of people in one of those little parks on yeah. santa monica and they go down rodeo and a friend of mine and i went to take some pictures just like of american flags and sign like just and we almost got into it with some people 
are you guys Black Lives Matter? Blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, I was fucking, come settle fucking down. Like, and I'm starting to look at these people when we're having interactions. It got to the point where I'm like, go ahead and try and fucking do something. You fucking, uh, I'm like, that's what I thought. You're fucking pussies. You're fucking pussies. And I backed away and I'm like, here's, here's why. And I'm not saying I'm against Trump or pro Trump. I'm talking about these human beings that I'm facing off with, no matter whether they for Biden or Trump or whatever. And I'm like, these people are like rabid dogs and they don't even really know what they're doing. Do you know what I mean? Like you could see it in their eyes. Like, these people are just fucking morons. Yeah. That don't, there's some thing, some cause, and, blah, 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 and they don't, like, I'm just fucking, you know, it was fucking so eye opening to me. And, it's, and I'm not saying, oh, it was so eye opening to me that I went to a Trump thing and saw how they are, because it would be the same thing at a far left fucking thing or Black Lives Matter thing or any of those things, it's like people are fucking torn apart by shit they have no idea about. Do you know what I mean? Like you- I know what you're saying. Don't, I don't totally they, agree, but I know what you're saying. Why don't you totally agree? Because I, I mean, think- what, what part of it? Um, to say that people have no idea what they're, what they're fighting about, I think In that's- In general, I'm talking about. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think sometimes the loudest voices don't know what they're doing. That, you know, but that's who I encountered is right. the loudest voices. That's right. exactly my point. Right. Okay. Those that's people, exactly, yes. That's yes. exactly what I'm trying to say is the loudest, you know, the empty can rattles the most. When, you're, you know? when, you're, when your identity is now anger, you're doing something wrong. You know, you can be, you can be driven by anger, but get something done or have a good point or do it a different way. But this ravenous screaming violent. Dude, and it, it, I, I was laughing. I was standing there very calm too. Like I was almost kind of surprised at how calm it was. Cause this wasn't my deal. It wasn't my fight. It wasn't my saying it wasn't, I was just artistically trying to fuck around with my new ISO settings and AF settings. <laughs> like that's all I was doing was, wow, there's cool shit and colors and light. And I'm going to try and capture something. Uh huh. And, uh, and a friend of, we didn't go to it purposely. A friend and a friend of mine and I were going out shooting. We shot buildings before, and then we saw this thing happening. So we're like, wow, oh, let's fucking go over there and shoot. And I was very calm because I didn't have a dog in, in, in on the fight on either side. But it, exactly what you're saying is, I saw it go like the those empty cans, those fucking loudest voices, like. I was like, wow, this is like a watching a social a social experiment without knowing anything. We weren't wearing anything different than anybody else. There was nothing that demarked us. There was plenty of people taking pictures, but these people just decided this little tiny group of people just decided. Are you da, 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 all paranoid? I'm like, even if we were, yeah. what's the fucking difference? We're just taking fucking people. You know, like what's the and they're filming me, and I'm like, you can keep filming me taking pictures like go ahead and blast them all over the internet look at this asshole taking pictures like it's weird it was it's amazing to me but i i'm detached a little bit because i'm off facebook i'm off twitter i haven't been watching news other than local fire stuff like where's the fires and this and that but like i know what's going on with the race and all that and politics and everything but I'm just not vested in it like I was in the beginning of all this shit. And to watch that, I was just like, wow, we're headed for the end. Like, this is going to be civil war, no well, matter what side wins. Well, you said it's going to be, we're on the brink, and I honestly think it's already started. I think we're yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not, I'm, not trying to, bad. I'm not trying to be dramatic. I, I seriously think that, like, it's happening right now. I mean, when you have, when you have, um, people like that are protesting and then uh, backers of a certain president drive to a different state to go interrupt this political thing and they're bringing pepper spray and they're pulling people out of cars and calling people faggots. And it's like it we are in a civil war. I mean, it is happening. Well, a lot of the people that were at this thing weren't from Los Angeles. That's OK. I didn't know that, but that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So like. 
if you're traveling over state state lines and you're trying to do this, your point is not just to you're looking to start shit. Right. Are you looking to start shit or are you also paid to start shit? There's that angle too. Like Absolutely. That's why I just don't believe anything. It's all fucking false. Like even the truth is false at this point. Do you know what I mean? Well, and that's it's all that the documentary. Fault of, yeah. Even the truth is that's exactly what the point of the documentary is, is is the the way the system is set up with social media and all that and all the apps and advertisers and that, you're the product. Yeah. And the 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 mega force of com- the computer or whatever it doesn't care what the truth is it doesn't even know what's true and what's not there's it no just, way to determine it just wants your eyes on it it wants interaction it just, gener- it just wants you to be addicted to it. it wants you to be addicted to it that's the that's the cost and you're the product that the companies are selling to advertisers mm-hmm. and it's amazing how they gear it and how they make it and how it w- could have been used for good and it just got out of control fast and these are the guys who came up with it you know the guys who when they talked to the guy who invented the like button the thumbs up button on facebook and we're we're not ruining the documentary but he's he's saying like when i created the like button i was so excited to like bring something that brings joy to people and and spread positivity he's like (laughs) it's making people kill themselves i didn't know it would lead to kids killing themselves because they don't get enough likes and it's it's just heartbreaking um, but this idea that if we truly get to a point where truth isn't truth and like a fact is debatable, well, I think we're at that point, right? We got to, if, if we don't correct back to like mm-hmm. be able to agree, you can have your opinion as to why things happen, but like when you go back to like uh, the inauguration day when they said it was the, the, the biggest, the biggest crowd ever for an inauguration. And everyone's like, well, no, I mean, look side by side. It's not. And the press secretary, press secretary said, these are alternative facts. We have alternative facts. So, well, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and that happens exactly. on both sides too. So like, yeah. Yeah, it's fucking, it's we insane. Got a, we got a funny show tonight, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for tuning fucking, in. Yeah, thanks for having me do this tonight, Dan. Yeah, no problem, dude. <laughs> God. So let's get back to you cutting your fucking nose off. Yeah, that was good. I might do it again just out of boredom. It was weird. Uh, you and I did, we got coffee last week. It was the first time we'd seen each other in seven months, and that is so yeah. weird. It was weird. I mean, it's great to see you, but I just yeah. can't believe how, it's one of those things where like seven months has gone by in a second, and it's also taken 26 years. Yeah, it's, this is just, uh yeah, I'm kind of at a loss for words. Like, I don't even know what to say about it anymore. I, I can't even muster up the caricature of being angry about it, like anymore. You know what I mean? I, I'm exhausted. I'm fucking exhausted from all of this shit. Yeah. From all of it. From the COVID thing, from the fucking, you know, even that. You can't even get a straight answer with that. Just think about how many conspiracy theories are out there about this virus and what it is and what it does and how it really affects people and what the numbers are and how many cases of people who have died who didn't even have COVID, but they called it COVID, blah, blah, blah. You can't even get the truth about that. No, no. What will you do? um, If there's a vaccine in November, October, November, December, will you take it and will your kids get it? No, not yet. Not without there's, there's, Uh, There's like two or three physicians that I know very well that I trust. And without their say, so I wouldn't take anything yet. Okay. Yeah. I I watch a lot of uh, like Dr. Drew has a few podcasts and he's saying he's known Dr. Fauci for like 35 years. And he said, he's a conservative dude, but he's a very good man. He goes, as soon as he says it's okay, I would believe it. Right. I believe Dr. Drew, I think, but yeah, yeah he I, was I, on our other show many times, mm-hmm. a few times. He's a, you know, Dave and I have been on his show. He's, I, he's someone I believe for sure. Yep. He's a, an intellectual, good hearted person. We'll get him on here at some point, I hope. Yeah. But there's, there's a few doctors that I know of for l- long term parts of my life that they are more in the know than I am. Mm-hmm. And they are also people who have said to me before, that's bullshit. That take. 
that's bullshit. That take like, you know, get that. Da, 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 da. I won't even treat you if you don't get that. You have to get this. Do not get that. Like they've told me they've guided me through the years. So I would wait for them. Keep me updated. Yeah. I, I want to know what's up. Um, to say, <clears throat> but so you said the kids are back in school. I just got a COVID test today. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Nose or just the, the mouth? The nose. I haven't had the nose yet. I've had the mouth three times. The nose. It, times. it wasn't as bad. I mean, they go fucking back there, but it was like for a second. They go, and they pull it out. And Do you get results yet? Not yet. Okay. Uh, like two days, day or two days. But we had, like, there's a medical, you can have them come to your, ho- your house and do it. Nice. My wife has to. Oh, excuse me. My wife has to travel uh, to go see a family member, so she wanted to get the test. So I, I was like, "Well, I'll tag along." <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. Thanks. Have the kids done it yet? Have they had the nose done? Okay. No. Yep. So what is the? So the, you said the kids are back in school. Well, they're in the, back yeah. in the rooms, right? Basically, yeah. What is the best part and the worst part about having the kids do homeschool? There's, there's no good part to it. There's nothing good about it. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. They're not getting the full education, socialization. They're not getting any of that. And I could, you know, I could tell because I pop in, you know, often, uh, you know, I'm also their fucking maid and cook, you know, like, dad, I'm hungry. They'll text me. I come up. What do you want? In the middle of class. Sometimes I'll just pop in. They're looking at their phones too, like, you know, off to the side. Like, it's just not, there's nothing good about it. There's nothing good at a, at, there's nothing good about a child being home all day. There's yeah. nothing good about it. Um, the teachers, they're great and they try and they try and make it entertaining and they try and make it, you know, fruitful, the, the lessons and stuff, but. It, there's nothing good about them being that home. must be exhausting too for the teachers to try to like try to be fun yeah yeah try you know, and make we're, it we're doing it right now and we're failing yeah we are failing <laughs> miserably this might this be might... A, a scrapper yeah i was <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. say that too oh. yeah and i apologize for that to listeners or whatever but like i'm just i'm fucking exhausted and not just because i had a hard day today like i'm just exhausted and and we also, I think, at least everyone in America feels the same way. A lot of countries have sort of kind of gotten it back up going. Our friends in Slovakia, what's up, guys? Hope you guys are doing good. Um, yeah, we're doing our best. We can't always be funny, but we'll always be honest. And uh, yeah. right now, everything sucks so bad. Yeah. I didn't, like, I've had run-ins. I've had my the juice guy, the coffee guy, I've had those that I meant to talk about. I just, I'm like, I don't know. It's not even funny to me right now. Yep. You know what I mean? Like those things aren't even, usually when those things happen, I'll get a little twinge somewhere in my subconscious of this will be a great retell, whether it be on the radio or to a friend or whatever. And when they're happening now, I'm just like, this sucks and I can't take it. <laughs> you know, like there's no, there's no, uh, there's no dopamine scent whatsoever. You know what I mean? Absolutely. To, to, yeah, absolutely. But, so like a lot of times I'm like, there's been a few incidents where I was going to say something to someone and I'm just like, fuck it. And usually I'm not, I'm like the guy who says something, you know? Um, actually, I did get into a little bit of a scrape right out on my porch to, today, a few I hours knew, ago. I knew there was something in there, buddy. I knew this it. woman's walking her dog. She's got like a half shirt on. She's pretty, and she's like, you know, I'm like, I'm looking, like, hmm, who's that? I haven't seen her walking her dog. You know, just kind of being a pig in my head a little bit. Hey, baby. Tight shirt, you know, half shirt. Anyway, her. D- dog is sniffing around and i see the dog's gonna go and it's like on there's my lawn then the sidewalk then more lawn than the street right and it's in that in between area 
And she's just like holding the leash back like that. And she's just this. And I watch the dog squat. Dog takes your shit. And I'm like, this cunt is going to just keep walking. So she takes one, two steps. I'm like, I'm like, I whistle. I'm like, are you really not going to fucking clean that up? I'm sitting right here. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, okay, clean it up. She's got the thing with the little baggies, like the little bags. Yeah. And I see it. And she's like, oh, did he go? And I'm like, yeah, he went. And he's scratching the grass, like, which is the telltale sign that your dog just went. I don't mind about the scratching the grass. My dog does that, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, she's like, I said, I fucking live here. And my kids walk there. And I don't want to clean that shit off of their fucking sneakers. Pick it up. And she's like, oh, I'm so not like that. I was just looking at my phone. I didn't realize you went. And I'm like, well, then don't look at your phone while you're walking on other people's lawns. Yeah. And she's like, I said I was sorry. And she bends down, picks it up, walks away, whatever. But I just sat there like this, smoking a cigarette or whatever I was doing. And I'm just like defeated, even though I said something and she picked it up. Like, I'm like... I just can't do this anymore. <laughs> like I just can't do this anymore. Yep. These are you things I mean? that, that these th- those are things that used to like feed your soul. <laughs> like those that you'd wake up and you'd be like, please yeah. let someone do this. And now it's just like I'm done. I lost. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. defeated. I'm done. I'm yeah. done. Like I'm like, I I give up. I just give up. I can't I can't even be a dick properly anymore. I had that That's same moment. I had that same moment a couple of weeks ago. Uh, a chick was walking her. It was like a pit bull in front of our apartment. And we have a screen door in front. And I see her walking, and I see the dog. They're slowing down. I'm like, okay, let me, let me just see what happens here. The dog takes a huge shit on our lawn, and she starts walking away. And I'm like, are you going to clean that up? And she's like, she kind of looks at the screen. And she goes. I just realized I'm out of bags. I swear to God, I was going to get a bag. I'll be right back. And I was like, all right, okay, we'll see. And I felt bad for yelling at her because I was like, I was waiting to yell at her and she probably right. maybe did make a mistake. And she did come back and I felt like kind right. of a dick for saying something. But Well, I had one, this has got to be like two years ago, maybe less, maybe like a year ago. This one girl is walking her dog, and I'm never again. Again, I've met, usually I know all the people in the area. Like even if I don't know them personally, I've seen them. I see them every day walking their dog. Right, a lot of them I'm pleasant, wave hi to or whatever. This one girl, she's got like half her hair dyed pink. She's like skinny wearing a cut off guns and roses shirt but she's way too young to really be into that band <laughs> do you know what i mean like she probably paid 300 type. bucks for the shirt at wasteland yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 exactly and she's walking her dog and she's like got her headphones on and she's walking like this <laughs> so- <laughs> yeah i'm like so ready i'm fucking annoyed her dog shits and i scream i'm like are you gonna fucking pick that up and she's like, I don't have no bag. Like, right off the bat, giving me attitude. I don't have any bags. And I'm like, well, then you shouldn't be walking your fucking dog. And I'm like, I have a fucking dog. When I walk, I have fucking bags. So she's like, well, if you want me to clean it up, then go get a bag. So I fucking storm into the house. And I take a whole, you know, they have the little rolls the roll. of bags. I have, like, 20 of them. I take a roll, and I walk it out to her, and I hand it to her. I'm like, clean up after your fucking dog. So she, she does it. And, dude, this is where I almost hit a woman. <laughs> like, she cleans it up. Then she ta- she gives hands me the bag back, the ba- a roll of bags. And I go, keep them. You need them. Keep them. <laughs> so she keeps it. She starts walking. As soon as she, like, I walk back up to the steps, the fucking bag's... Like it starts to unroll a little, so it has a tail now. Comes flying over my car and fucking lands right on my lawn. She's fucking tossed them. So I take the fucking, I pick them up. I run out into the sidewalk. I'm like, "You fucking cunt!" I'm screaming like neighbors are coming out. You fucking cunt! And I throw the fucking bags at her. I whip out my phone. I start taking pictures of her. I blew up the pictures. 
this fucking girl lets her dog shit all over our fucking street and does not clean it up. I put him up on the fucking you like did? A crazy person. Yeah. Put him up on all the fucking telephone poles. Never saw her again. Oh, that's great. Never saw her again. And like, I was nervous for a second too. Like, if this bitch comes back and like breaks windows or does something to my house, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, it's a fucking war. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that that is how everyday citizens get killed, is by yeah. her by having her reaction to something. Like you're in the wrong, don't lean into it. Like accept it. Like you fucked up. I Just, did. And someone's trying to help you and give you a way to fix it. Here's a here's a whole bunch of bags. Just a few weeks after that, there's this guy who I see all the time. He's always fucking wheeling and dealing on his speakerphone, like. Buy, sell, sell, buy, one of those guys. He's like this... A look at me guy. A look at me guy. He's like a big guy, like a lumbering guy, but like kind of a wimpy guy. You can just tell by his voice and everything. And same thing. A couple weeks later, his dog shits. He's fucking around. Buy, sell, sell, buy, buy, sell, sell, buy. His dog shits. I'm on the phone with Dave. And I go... Hold on a second. If this fucking guy fucking doesn't clean clean up whatever his uh, and he's like, okay, put me on speaker because <laughs> Dave wants to hear it. And I go, bro, are you gonna fucking clean up after your dog? He's looks and he's like, oh, did he go? And I'm like, yeah, he fucking went. You're on the phone. He fucking went. Clean it up. He's like, oh shit, I don't have any bags. I go, well, that's not my fucking problem. And he goes, yeah, you know, you're right. It's not your problem. I go, do you want something to clean it up with? He's like, okay. And I fucking run in. I hand him some bags. He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He's like, I just wasn't paying attention. I don't have a bag. I'm so sorry. I'm like, here, just keep the bags. And he walked away and kept the bags. That's the difference. Like, yes, he's a fucking moron for just leaving the house without him. You uh -huh. know, like he didn't have bags, whatever. He's not paying attention to his fucking dog. So the dog isn't really benefiting from this walk either, you know. But like, at least he was like, shit. I fucked up. You're right. It's not your problem. I'm sorry. Thanks for helping me out. This fucking con. When she threw the, dude, when she threw those bags, I almost had a heart attack because my <laughs> blood. <laughs> it was like one of those muscle sledgehammer things at the carnival. Like yep. my blood bing, went. Bing. Yep. I was like, because I started shaking. Like, and what do I do? What am I supposed to do to some fucking skinny little wafy fucking I mean, attitude ridden con? You could have you like, shot her dead. <laughs> but You'd be you know, yeah. well within your rights to kill that woman. I know I'd be well within my rights and people would applaud me for it, but I can't. I have children. You know what I mean? But like, what are you supposed to do? I was fucking screaming, you fucking cunt. There's a, there's nothing like that anger that doesn't build. It just like it goes Bam, to maximum. Right um yeah. yeah. I had that. So I've been, like I said, I've been really angry lately. Like I've had that, like that murderous rage, like looking for someone to f say something to me, like, look at me. If you look at me when I'm walking, yeah. I'm probably going to kill you. When we were on Larchmont that day, mm -hmm. I was hoping that you were going to say something to me that made me feel that way. <laughs> I don't like the turn we just took, dude. <laughs> it does not feel good. So yeah, the other night I was Dan I, says something. I was walking angry the other night and I, I got to a, a a crosswalk, light turned green. I'm walking, and this guy goes up on a car and he's not slowing down as he's getting closer to me. And he's getting closer and closer. And I'm like, is this motherfucker gonna bump me? And he stopped right before me. And I did I stopped and I stared and I was hoping he would look back or give me one of these things and I was going to drag him out and kill him. I wouldn't be here right now, but he was smart and just made a right turn and took off. But I was begging for it in my heart. I'm like, please fuck with me. All right. So I don't know. I might've told this when it happened. Cause this is again, like a year or two ago, the same street that we were on you mm -hmm. and I, that crosswalk in the middle of that street, we were on that very yep. crosswalk. Yeah. <clears throat> this guy I'm walking across the street and this guy comes and pulls up right at the stop sign. Very, I'm like, is this guy going to stop? Does he not see me? And I'm looking at him and he starts inching his car forward, like, like uh, uh, purposely. He's got a kid in the back in a, you know, in a toddler seat. And uh, I look at him like, dude, like what the fuck are you doing? And he rolls up and he's like, yeah, you got a fucking problem, tough guy. And I'm like, 
are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, you're talking to me like that with your fucking kid in your car? Are you fucking crazy? Yeah, I got a fucking pop. He keeps inching the car forward, and then he fucking and pulls around me. I'm going to pick up a pizza for the kids. So I go in. I pay for it. I have a huge, hot, fucking burning pizza in my hands. And I, the guy must have parked somewhere. I see him walking down the street with his kid. And he approaches me, and I'm like, I'm ready. I'm opening the box. Because I'm like, if this guy starts some shit with me, I'm going to Melted cheese in his eyes. Like a hot, flaming hot, right out of the oven pizza in his fucking face in front of his child is what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So he comes up to me. He's like, hey, man, I'm sorry if I fucking got a little out of hand. He's like, you know, I'm from Boston. I'm not one of these L.A. guys. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm from New York, and you were just about to get this fucking hot pizza thrown in your fucking face. And I'm like, what does being from Boston have to do with it? Like, you know what I mean? Like, okay, so so you're not a calm, peaceful L.A. person. You're, you're just an raging, asshole. You're just a raging <laughs> maniac from fucking Boston. And he's like, he's like, oh, I didn't realize you're from New York. I'm like, well, what difference would that make? Like, you're yelling at me like that in front of you. He's like, I know. I'm just on edge. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm coming to you apologizing. And I'm like, all right, cool, you know. He's like, what's your name? And I'm like. We're, we're good. We're yeah. good. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> Have a good day. Yeah. And I walk away. But I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, and yeah. I'm like, fucking figures. Some jerk off from Boston ruining my life again. You don't want to start this, dude. You don't want to start this. I'll fucking, <laughs> I'll inch towards you like you wouldn't believe. Oh. oh. Yeah, I think we should scrap this one. <laughs> All right. Just get rid of the show and just maybe <laughs> kill ourselves. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do, man. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do. I'm with you, buddy. I uh, I just want to get back to be able to go and go places and see people and do the show in the same room together and have guests and just, I don't know. Yeah, one, one the Zoom is killing me. Just everything Zoom. This Zoom, any, first of all, I've had a lot of business type things and everybody's on Zoom. Yep. And I'm like, we all used to do conference calls when we couldn't. Like, why do you have to do Zoom now? Like, yeah. that, I brought that up a few times, like, in a, in a realistic way. Like, why do we have to, like, turn the camera on, worry about the fucking shirt I'm wearing now, what I'm looking like? Like, why can't we just get on a conference call? Like those were a big thing before this hit when we could see each other, but we couldn't be in the same room. We would just talk. Right. But everybody's like falling into this zoom vortex where everything's gotta be zoom. And I understand we're doing a trying our best to do a show here. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a need for it here. Yeah. And usually, usually we are in the same room and it's a different feel and it's all that, but like, you know, uh, I just I can't do the Zoom thing. I can't do that. I don't want to fucking FaceTime people. I just and I have been seeing people. <clears throat> you and I went out for coffee. I've done people who I know are being safe or quarantined. We like go go out and grab some food or whatever. We sit across from each other. It's fine. I'm not like that freaked out about it right now. Did you just have some sort of like my my, my ear? Uh... Um, what the fuck are these called? You, you just look like you were doing an impression of De Niro in Awakenings when he's slipping. Back oh yeah, we're going back, of course. When the, back when the medicine's the... wearing off, that's a great movie. By learn, the way, learn, learn. Yeah. <laughs> in the you orange, just juice. did that though. You just, you... Dude, I'm, I'm, what are these called? In Ear, my ears, earbuds. Earphones? Yeah, my my uh, yeah earbuds. My in ears. They touched deep inside my ear near my eardrum, and it gave me a chill. <laughs> But I can't wait. I can't wait to look back at the video and see what I did because I have an idea. I'm sure it wasn't graceful or cool. I was just getting ready to like divulge that I might kill myself soon, and you went <laughs> some oh, weird fuck Parkinsonian tremor you had. Bring it on! Come get me, Parkinson's, please. Um, I don't even know what we're saying. I don't even give a shit. Yeah. Well, what I was saying was I've been. Oh yeah, I've been going. Uh, I've been seeing people. I've been going for a meal here and there. I've been going to my 
get coffee or whatever in the morning. It's not even that. It's just every. It's just the whole energy of the entire nation, and I'm I'm assuming it's global too. Although other places seem to be bouncing back a little bit better than us, but it's just the vibe I can't take anymore. Even it's not even like oh, I'm only stuck at home with the windows locked and nailed and shut and boards across the door. But yeah, it felt like that at first with the first couple of weeks, but like. I get in the car, I go for drives, I get gas, I get here, I go to a store, I, you know what I mean? Like, I go to the bank, I do my thing, I, I've seen people, I've socialized a little bit. It's just the attitude I can't, it's just so... It's a feeling. I, yeah, it's a the feeling, feeling in the air, yep. It's just fucking different now. Even when I go to get coffee bean every day, I see the same people, and they ask like, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. And I'm like... Even the way you're asking me how I'm doing, I know that you're not asking because you want to know. You're just like, we're all just going through the motions and waiting and waiting and waiting. I wonder if this is what like the Great Depression actually felt like. Yeah, yeah. We're in a depressed nation right now, for sure. Like the emotional toll that this is taking. I mean, I know it's got to be different in other in other cities and other counties and other states, you know, where the live the lifestyle is a little different. But at least in the big cities, you know, I have contact with New York and L.A. mostly. Everybody's in it. It's a, a cloud of dark, black depression, gray cloud every over everybody's head. And from what I hear, it seems like L.A. is one of the most oppressive in the country right now as far as what you can and can't do. And yeah, um, I don't know. Even if stuff was open, I don't know if I'd be going and doing stuff. I just I just want all the shit to go away. Yeah, it's like, well, even if you're trying to act as if and socialize and do stuff, it's still in the back of your head every second of yep. like, the world is the way the world is right now. I've even been jerking off less. I'm like, uh, I haven't jerked off in like so long that it's becoming worrisome. Yeah. You, you know, know how, I mean? you know how, like, when you open up your web browser and you'll, like, whatever you, I, you watch you porn, or whatever, you type in Y O U P and the rest of it just finishes, like, it, it, mm-hmm. it knows. I haven't done, it's been so slow that I have to, like, type the whole word out again, which is a real sign that things are slipping for me. It comes up like you pothead. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You something, yeah. something. Yeah, just, uh, things are a change. Yeah, man. And I've tried a couple times too. Mm hmm. Like, I got to fucking get rid of some bad seed, yep. you know, like for that reason, not even a fucking sexual horny reason. And I'm like, I end up fucking like tapping that thing like I'm playing ping pong with it. And I'm like, this is just not going to happen. The wet noodle. Yeah. Just like, fuck it. And on that note, well, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for thanks for enjoying our show. Uh, if you want to buy a T-shirt, who gives a shit? Find yeah, us on social media, buy, wherever. If you want to buy a t-shirt, where do they go? Dan, wow. you gave me a t-shirt this week. Yeah. Have you have you worn it yet? Do you like I it? I have not. Okay. I like it, but I have not worn it yet. But I like the material. It's very soft. Those we did the we made those lip logo shirts, and they're they're pretty great. I really gotta say the Isaacs did a good job. Steve Isaacs did a great job with the He did a great job, yeah. The design the and the logo. Mm-hmm. And so, um Whatever. I got your pretty sweet fucking shirt too. Yeah, you did. Do you know you gave me that before, but a different color? Yeah, that's why so I now got I, you that. Yeah, one. I got two that colors. One's more the real colors of yep. the actual school. Todd got me a uh, Shermer High School, Shermer Illinois shirt. Which, if you're older than twenty five, you should know that's all the John Hughes movies was Shermer Illinois, Shermer High School. Yeah. Yep. Shermer um, High School, Shermer Illinois. Thank you for it, that. Does it fit you? Did you wear it yet? Yeah, it fits great. All right, perfect. It's perfect. Yep. All Fits right. my tits real nice. Enough sucking each other's dicks. Well, that's why I got the little, I got the, they have a size where it has a bigger chest. It's so medium down bigger. here and large up here. Yeah, I got you that size because <laughs> it's like a, was, yeah, like, that shape. I wanted your tits to lay nicely in them. Looking great, dude. Thank you. All right, cool. So uh, we will see you hopefully next week on a better maybe, note. Maybe with Frank. Maybe you know? with Frank. I'm not fucking holding my breath. We got to get some more guests on here. We, we got to get like, I would love to get Faustino back on here. I, uh, I talked to him a couple of times. He's down to do it. It's just his schedule is just being really crazy lately too, because he's doing so much 
of his own thing mm-hmm. and other work online. It's it's tough because especially people who are online all the time the, in this fashion don't want to get back on it and talk for an, half an hour or whatever. And, yeah. Yeah. I, I could watch you guys talk forever. It's funny shit. We will do it again for sure. And keep doing your art, by the way. You guys may not know this, but Todd is a wonderful artist. I know. I, 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 one reason why I stopped doing it as much as I used to way, way, way back in the day is because it is time consuming. And I'm the type of person that if I start it, I can't leave it until it's finished. Yep. So if I'm working on something that's big, it's, it, I'm up for 24 hours until it's done. And having kids and all that, it's sometimes a little hard to do that. But uh, Uh thank you. I appreciate it. Honestly, I mean it. I'm not just saying it. Like I I don't fancy myself an artist. Like, you know, I'm not selling anything, you know, but. And that's why I'm, I'm, you know, it's genuine. I know you're not trying to like sell yourself. I'm just telling you straight up. You have a very uh, unique style of art that stands out as being different. And that's really a hard thing to do. I just posted something right before we started that I did this morning that is very different than what I do, and I was super insecure about posting it. Go look at it right now. Oh, okay. Let me look at it right now. I was very insecure about posting it because it's not what I usually do. Interesting. Because most of the stuff that I do is very literal. This is more on the abstract side. And if you don't like it, fake it. I swear to God. Fake your reaction. (laughs) Fake your reaction. This is amazing. No. But for for real, I absolutely love your art. How big is this? How big is this one? It's uh, it's pretty big. I mean, the the it's right here actually. It's it's like maybe three three feet tall, you know. And the the hand and heart one that I did that you liked. Which I will do one for you like that. Thank you. For the Thank house. you. Um, that one's probably it's probably like four feet tall, four and a half feet tall, almost. It's fucking. And awesome. usually when I do shit, I do shit this big because okay. usually I draw more than mm-hmm. paint. painting's brand new for me. So I I'm think try so- to start doing them more. I'll ask it's you on here now because <clears throat> okay. it's hard to do it too because um, most people that I know that crank out a lot of art have a place to do it, have a studio or a garage or whatever, and I don't have that space, so I'm just doing it in the driveway, in the sun, in the hot sun, oh. so I don't get paint in the house. So that's a little bit of a deterrent for me too. To no wonder there's so much anguish in these. You're doing it in the <laughs> sun. <laughs> no, so yeah, seriously, I need a little, they're, they're, I need a space. They're really great. Well, what were you gonna say? I'm saying I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to finish up my solo record. I hate it sounds so stupid, pretentious to say, but I'm trying to finish oh, it up. Someone sent a question asking about this very thing. So oh, like, they did. Are you? Yeah, to the oh. Gmail. I forgot to oh, bring it okay. up. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I would like you to do the art for it if you I feel like it. it. If you would want to use it, I would definitely do it. That would mean a lot to me. I think I would like that. Yeah, I would so, love to. So, but and that is one like you're saying about the uh, once you get going with creativity, you can't stop. I started yeah. working on one song a couple weeks ago, and I cranked through, and I was so jazzed about it. And I have like five more to do, and I just cannot motivate to get back into it. But I, I really have even to. just. Uh, I've done a bunch too that I haven't posted because I just don't want to be that guy either. Mm-hmm. Um, but, Why do you, uh, do, you do, do you have any friends that post too much art or <laughs> yeah, I just can't <laughs> no, do it. I, yeah. No, I just can't do it. So I've been photographing a lot of art too that I'm not stuff that I post like, yeah, I shoot some of that strange artist life after death street that no one knows who it is. I shoot a lot of their stuff that they do on the street. <laughs> that Kevorkian but, one was pretty great. Yeah, that's not Kevorkian, actually. Oh, that's Albert, oh, Albert, Albert Fish. Albert, Albert Fish, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, but I've been using the... That's why I started breaking out my actual camera and not just my iPhone. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm starting to shoot a lot of shit around the city, too, because that it's just great for that now, because it's just not a lot of people out and tra- not a lot of traffic. And- Let's go do that shit we've been talking about for years. 
Yeah, let's do it. When I need to ready? get out, I need to get out of this fucking house. I'll be over in 15 minutes. All right, cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Todd we'll Newman. See, thank you, Dan Cleary. We will see you uh, hopefully next week, and uh, hopefully we'll have more funny shit to talk about. And uh, bear bear with us. I will take responsibility. I did no planning for this one tonight. I Neither usually I. pull together some stories, and I was like this close to at like seven minutes before we went on to being like, let's just do this tomorrow. I got nothing planned. Yeah. Which usually we don't have. We have a loose. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about this. But I had none of that tonight. We've had, we've talked about, we have plans for this show that we've talked about for a while that we just can't do in this current situation. Yeah. And once we, once we get back in the yeah. studio, we'll, 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 it'll change. But, All right. All right, buddy. All right. I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. And we will see you soon. Later. This is Lola, and I'm here to tell the world to stop being such pussies and listen to Rare Form Radio.